Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I have been in a bit of a weird space with sewing recently because I did a couple of very large projects and then I did a couple very small projects and I am in currently in the middle of doing a couple very frustrating projects. <laughs> I am trying to repair my 18th century dress um, and by repair I just mean alter it. <laughs> but alterations are not a thing that I am good at <laughs> so it is challenging to me. So I am filming an alterations video to show you the changes that Abby and Nicole made. There are some things that I just do not understand anymore about why things are pinned the way they are. <laughs> so that may require an additional little consultation with those two to try to figure out what it was that I was supposed to do in specific areas. <sighs> Part of the problem is I waited too long to do the alterations after they got made with pins. I should have just tried to do them right then and there. But no, that's not what happened. Anyway, I'm also looking at my Regency dress, trying to figure out how I can make it better. It's not the way I want it. That's what I'm going to say about it. It's not the way I want it. And I know that I will make other Regency dresses, and maybe those will be the way I want them. This one, currently, right now, not the way I want it. So I'm hoping that I can figure out the things that I need to do to the gown in order to get it to where I want it to be. So, both of those are in process being filmed, <laughs> and I was going to work on those today, and then I was just like, you know what? I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to do this today. Like, ripping out my old stitches makes me sad anyway, and so I feel like mm, maybe I'll work on something new, which is the quintessential <laughs> thing that people do when they don't want to work on the project that they're in the middle of. So, what I'm going to do today is try to make the Amelia jacket by Screw Patterns. I think this jacket is super cute and I've seen it on a few people and I've been wanting to make one so I thought I would give it a go. Today's goal is merely to print the pattern out and to tape the pieces together. I am going to make a twall of it just to make sure that it fits me the way it should. I don't know how I'm going to do that though because my husband is not in town which means I have no way to lace up my stays right now. <laughs> so this is going to be an awkward and weird fitting process. But we're going to make it work. I will figure out how to get those stays on. They're spiral laced, so to some extent I should be able to, like, get them somewhere near where they need to be. But who knows? I'm not very good at this. So maybe I will be squirming in a corner, swearing for a while, and maybe I won't be able to get out of them. But I'm going to try to do this. Okay, it's, it's not even five minutes in this video, and I already have a story. <laughs> so I printed out my test square as you're supposed to do, and as I do, so that I do not mess up a 40 page print. So I did this, and then my printer was like, you're out of ink, we don't have any extra ink. I'm like, cool. So I go down to Staples, looking for my ink. They don't carry my ink anymore, obviously. Why would they do that? It seems ridiculous. Um, so I have to figure out what the replacement is, and I didn't have enough information about which thing I used in order to find that out. So. I had them print me one. So I now have a printout of the pattern, which is a fab. It ended up costing me more money, and I spent more time going down there to get the thing, and like between that and, you know, ink discovery and whatever. And I don't have the instructions printed out, which I would have printed out, so I'm like, game. Everyone's like, oh, it's so much better, it's so much cheaper, it's so much faster. I'm like, is it though? It's not for me. <laughs> Like, I still spent somehow two hours getting this stupid thing, which, I mean, I would have printed the thing and put it together in two hours, so, like, mm, okay. probably would have been cheaper to print it. I mean, ink is expensive, paper is expensive, and tape's expensive, so it probably actually comes out in the wash. I'm I'm glad to have the thing, right? Like, I'm not, I it's, it's fine. Um, but <laughs> I'm like, it's not actually that much better when you get it printed out. Also, I don't have the instructions printed out because that is something I completely forgot to send to them to get printed out and that would have been even more money, so... <sighs> Luckily, I have a Microsoft Surface, so I'm going to use that as a temporary solution until I can get whatever ink replacement that I need shipped to my house or go get it or whatever. I need to figure it out and go get it. Then I can print out the instructions. <laughs> I, I'm a person who likes paper instructions. I've always liked paper instructions. It's, it's planet killing, I'm sure. Someone's gonna yell at me, but it's how my brain works. And I like to cross things off as I go. It's really hard to do that when you're looking at your tablet. 
Someone once asked me, by the way, complete aside, someone once asked me, actually lots of people ask me, they say that they have this kind of thing on their cutting table, but it gets bubbly if they iron on it. Um, and how do I keep that flat? Um, this guy was out in the hallway for like probably two weeks and it got all bendy. You can kind of see a bend over there maybe. Uh, I take my iron and I put it on the lowest setting and I come over here and I iron that spot and then I put something heavy on it and it flattens it back out. So I, I, it mind bubbles sometimes too. I just like don't get that fussed about it, I guess. I just flatten it back out and move on with my day. Speaking of moving on with my day, <laughs> and I'm going to go cut this out so that my, my goals for today will have been achieved. Okay, one of the things I really like about these screw patterns is, sorry about the lights you can see in there, um, is that they give you your body measurements here, and then also the finished garment measurements, so you can figure out, and they're also in inches and centimeters, so you can figure out your size really well. Alright, so I got into my stays, there's my boobs, um, that was that was a thing but thank god for spiral lacing because it actually makes it a lot easier i they're it's not tied off at all i just sort of pulled from both ends and hoped and had to deal with some stuff in the middle but we're in how i'm gonna get out no clue <laughs> but it's one of the advantages of being an apple is that you have absolutely no hips whatsoever so you can just slide things right up like if things are big enough to fit around your middle you can get in them so like i don't have shoulders or hip problems getting in and out of things which is really great um, so I got these on. I had to take measurements for what I am in this situation. It's not that different than my normal measurements as it turns out. <laughs> so um, I figured out I'm going to make a 46, which is the same as your bust measurement, so 46 for the jacket. And we're going to see how that goes. Okay, so I'm in the middle of this, and many of you have been commenting that you miss chats. So I thought I would sit and do chats with you while I cut up these things. So I'm not going to look at the camera. Y'all know the drill. I just showed you what it looked like when I was uh, cutting, so you can just apply that forward from now on. <sighs> so, chats. Why haven't I been chatting? Oh, that's a good thing. Um, I haven't had chats in a while on my vlogs because I don't always like having chats when I'm doing a sponsored video. I don't know why. There's no real reason. I'm just usually trying to get to it. The Janome one specifically, I don't do them in because those videos are also getting posted on the Janome website. They don't need my chats on their website. <laughs> and by their website, I mean like their YouTube. So... I don't, I don't, I try to make those just like, here are the instructions for doing this thing because they gave me a very expensive machine so that I would make those. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, also, I feel like I haven't had chats in a while because like the stuff that has been on my mind has been heavy, like in the news kind of stuff. I mean... You know, I'm happy that we have a new president and have had for the last, whatever, six months um, and that kind of stuff. But, you know, I'm also living in California and we're having a massive drought and it's really hot. And, like, uh, I'm kind of worried about that because I'm at an age where I'm like, huh, I wonder what it's going to be like when I'm 70. You know, like, mm, should I live here anymore? Kind of questions. So there's been a lot of like that kind of stuff on my mind, like do I really want to deal with wildfires for the rest of my life? Maybe, maybe not. My next door neighbor is nature. <laughs> 
literally like I live next door to the county park so <sighs> fire season is rough around here <laughs> it, it started early it never really stopped I mean it got better for a little bit but we didn't have very much rain and now we're having a massive drought and you know all of our reservoirs are empty already and it's only early July so this is stuff I've been thinking about and I never have shied away from talking about heavy stuff with you guys like I I've talked about Black Lives Matter, I've talked about lots of stuff on here. So it's not that, I just don't want to like, constantly being, uh, talking about heavy stuff is, is exhausting for me and it's probably really exhausting for you guys. So when I'm like that, I just stop having jets because I don't want to inflict my brain on anyone else. Also there are people who come here to chill and not think about that stuff, so... I try to give a balance. A balance of here's me and what I'm thinking about and also not being a giant like buzzkill. So that's where we're at. <laughs> so what can I talk about that is not that kind of stuff? So I'm still doing costuming and color. For those of you who are new here since I started that, it is a separate YouTube channel. It is always linked down below in my description box for you. All of my ways to get a hold of me, social media, other channels, etc. are all down there. I'm still doing costume and color. We are very excited to have Chaney on this week. Um, it will probably be up before this video goes live, so you guys can go and watch it immediately. I'll link straight to it for you. Maybe I'll link straight to it from here, but Not Your Mama's History did a costume and color, which I'm very excited about. I was so stupid nervous to meet her. Largely because she's friends with Abby and, you know, when you're meeting a friend of a friend who's like very good friends with that person, you want to make a good impression and I'm a goofball so <laughs> I didn't know what she would think of me. <laughs> but we had a great chat, the Cost Me and Color episode turned out really well, she's an amazing human, so I'm very happy with it. For those of you who don't know, Cross Me in Color is where my buddy Gigi and I interview different costumers of color. And some of them have YouTube channels and some don't. Some are in, on Instagram and other places. Uh, we link you to them so you can go appreciate their work and stuff. But we thought, hey, there's no like place for that on YouTube right now. There's no like space for just like hey we're, let's meet new costumers and specifically costumers of color don't get as much traction as white costumers do so Gigi and I both had the same idea at the exact same time and we were trying to figure out what to do to like bring some positive attention to people um, who might not otherwise get attention so um, we do interviews with them so you can learn a little bit more stuff about them and so they can address also things that, you know, they would like to see change in the costuming community. But mostly it's all fun stuff and you get to see pictures of their costumes and get to know them better and it's kind of like, kind of like my 20 questions, but more focused on costuming. So that's a thing I'm still doing and very excited about and I love doing. Morgan and I have a podcast called Ladies Who Genre and for those of you who haven't listened to that, I will link it down below. It's a fun podcast where we talk about books we've read. And we used to announce the books ahead of time. I say we used to because we're on a break. Uh, so for those of you who don't know that we're on a break, we're on a break. <laughs> uh, Morgan is relocating her life, her entire life. And that is taking longer than expected. So rather than have to record stuff in a hotel room, which doesn't sound great, or other temporary accommodations while she figures all that stuff out. We are going to just take a break. I'm like, you know, we could just take a break. And she she was like, no. Um, and then one day she was like, yes. <laughs> so I'm like, cool, let's just, let's just have a break. Let's make it easy for everybody. So we're having one. Um, and we did it on our year anniversary, so we did do a whole year's of the podcast, which was fun. And I got to learn how to do podcasting, and that was awesome. And also, neither one of us, like, really wants to read right now. Like, I'm, I'm listening to some podcasts and kind of listening to Harry Potter in the background, because that's what I do when I don't know what to do. 
but I'm not really like enamored by books I haven't read yet. Like normally I'm, I go through phases where I want to like voraciously read new stuff and then I kind of don't for a while and we're both in a don't for a while phase. So it was a good time for us to take a break. So that is what we are doing. But all of the episodes are available forever for you. So I'll link to that. They're also all linked down below all the time for you should you ever want to listen to us chatter about random books that we've read. They are genre books. That's why it's called Ladies Who Genre. So it's anything that's like sci-fi, fantasy. There's a couple books that aren't sci-fi or fantasy, but they're like, you know, detective stories or, you know, genre ebooks. So even if that is the last episode that we ever record, I had a great time doing it. I, I'm pretty sure we will come back at some point, but we might not. Like there's every possibility that we'll just be like, eh, later. So it's, it was very fun. We had a good time. I enjoyed getting to know how to do podcasting. I love podcasting. It's very fun. I would contemplate doing another one. In fact, while we were doing one, I was like, I want a podcast about everything. Can we just make 700 podcasts about different things? So maybe someday I will make another podcast. Maybe someday Morgan and I will come back to it. We might come back to it soon. Like, I don't know. It sort of depends on our whim, essentially. That's what I'm telling you. <laughs> Uh, Morgan and I are both kind of whim-driven people, so that's pretty standard operating procedure for us. What else? I have two events coming up, which is why I wanted to make this jacket. I have um, a picnic that we're going to. It's an 18th century picnic. That's why I'm looking at making an 18th century jacket. I was thinking about my gown and getting it done by the time that that picnic happens and I might so we'll see but I also did want to make this Amelia jacket really bad and I thought it was super cute and I would like to make something <laughs> like the thing about my 18th century is I'm I'm doing alterations to it that are pretty heavy I am not an alterations person is what I learned <laughs> like I don't enjoy that process at all I I this is why I make mock-ups. And apparently I made a mock-up and I made some bad decisions when I made that mock-up. Because <laughs> uh, it was too big and the sleeves weren't right. Uh, the sleeves were actually fine, but the sleeve straps, the shoulder straps were not right. And I ended up messing up the whole dress kind of. Like it was an okay to wear kind of situation, but it wasn't great. So anyway. That will hopefully get done sometime soon. Also, I am working on that project. That's the one I was talking about at the beginning, concurrently, while I'm also doing this. <laughs> so, we'll see. I am looking forward to those events, though. Like, neither one is really big, I think. One of them is just me and my six costuming buddies that live close to me. We just get together in each other's backyards and do stuff together. Because sometimes you don't want to go to a huge thing. <laughs> Sometimes you just want your good buddies and, up, you know, hanging out, having a cocktail, in costume, take some pictures, and then have some, have some drinks and snacks. So that's what we're doing there. What else is happening? Oh, my husband is currently out of town. He should be back by the time this goes live, or maybe right afterwards, but... Yeah, I hate it when he's out of town. <laughs> I have so many more chores when he's out of town. I, he called last night and I was just like, you do so much stuff around this house. Like you do so much stuff around this house. I will say that when he's gone, I clean the entire house as soon as he leaves. And then it doesn't get messed up the entire time he's gone because I do things and then I clean them immediately. Whereas he's kind of like a mess maker and then he cleans. But he takes care of a lot of the daily chores. Like... I feed the cats, sometimes he feeds the cats, sometimes he cleans up like cat boxes and he barf, like if it's a fish, he cleans the fish filters, like because we have a giant pond outside. He, he takes care of so much stuff. I am so appreciative of him. He also like brings me drinks and um, you know, like I could just 
be like water and water will just appear it's it's magical like my husband is the biggest peeper i adore him he's been in some videos before so he um is a really great guy and he has been gone or will have been gone for 18 days when he gets back and 18 days is too many it's much better when i'm out and about in the world than he is home <laughs> Actually, we both think that. He likes going on vacations and stuff with me, but he, he's out visiting his mom right now, and he's like, this is too long. I just want to be at home. So, especially after a year and a half of being home all the time, like, we all kind of got used to that. <laughs> it's a lot easier to be home. So, that's what's going on with me. Um, is there anything else important or newsworthy to say? I don't think so. There's not a, a ton of stuff going on. It's same old same old i took a little bit of time off sewing i have been doing that regularly and that is making me excited about sewing so i think that is key for me is like not doing the grind all right i have to cut up that big piece i'll be back so i just realized that this is scroop plus virgil's fine goods which means amber had a hand in this so props to you amber I'm making your jacket. I'm very excited. Thought I would give a little shout out to her here. So, I am interested in what you guys are doing. Uh, I have to say, I love reading your comments. I know I say this every video, but I really do. I read them, like, almost every day. I am weird in that sometimes I read them and then I don't respond to them thinking I'll respond to them later and then that, like a week goes by and then I'm like oh and then I start responding to them after like a week. I'm reading them all the time as they're coming in so please leave me comments let me know what you guys are up to what you're doing I am I love hearing what you guys are reading and what you're watching and what you're working on your projects that you're han you're handling right now so that is one of my favorite parts of my day is when I lay down and go to sleep and I stare at my phone for two hours lying to myself that I'm gonna go to sleep that's one of the things I'm doing is <laughs> feeding comments which I think is super fun it's really great to like get to know you guys and know what you guys are doing and what you're into so that's pretty cool what did I just watch oh I just watched the miniaturist I was cruising PBS app, as you do, looking for stuff to watch at midnight last night, because that's who I am as a PBS watcher, turned into my grandma. Um, it's okay, I kind of like my grandma. And I remember during my 20 questions with Bernadette, I asked her the what book do you wish you could experience for the first time again question and she said the miniaturist so I I have the audiobook and I wanted to read it but last night I was looking for something to watch and PBS presented it to me and it has that chick who is in Emma 2020 Anya Taylor Joy I think is her name in my house she gets called the chick whose eyes are set too far apart because her eyes are really far apart um, which is a human standard of beauty like the farther apart your eyes are the more beautiful you're considered by like other humans it's like one of those things where like you know how like there's the ratio between your waist and your hips <sighs> makes you more beautiful or if you're symmetrical or whatever she must be gorgeous because her eyes are really far set apart my battery is flashing is why I keep staring up at the screen going oh anyway so I watched that movie Woo! it's a, it's actually a mini series it's three parts um, it's part of Masterpiece Collection, and if you're, I'm sure it was made in the UK because, or it's probably, it's probably made in Amsterdam because that's what it was uh, supposed to be set, but I'm pretty sure it was made by the BBC. Uh, a lot of Masterpiece stuff is BBC crossover. Is all of Masterpiece BBC crossover? Things I've never questioned before. Anyway, that was a ride, is what I have to say. I did not expect that. Let me change my battery and I will come back and tell you like a brief plot summary. Like a, a trailer level plot summary. Okay, we have a new battery. I also had a momentary chat with my buddies. <laughs> okay, so the miniaturist is about a girl who gets married and moves into her husband's house who lives in Amsterdam in... I can't pinpoint the century because I'm not good at anything before the 1800s and even then I'm not very good at it 
So I would say somewhere in the like 1600s, maybe 17, maybe 15, somewhere in there. They had bodices, like cone shaped bodices. Um, <laughs> so that's actually a lot of centuries. Anyway, she moves into this house and her husband is kind of weird and his sister lives there and she's kind of weird. And then there are two house servants that live there also. And they're all kind of weird. No one's exceedingly mean to her, but no one's exceedingly nice to her either. And her husband has a very weird relationship with his sister. So his sister says, oh, you need to get her a wedding gift. And so he gets her this gift, which is a like dollhouse essentially of their house. So it's an exact copy of their house. And she writes away to a miniaturist who is a person who makes miniature things for dollhouses or whatever and asks for three specific items. And those items show up and they look exactly like she wanted them to. And then other items start showing up and they are items that are like in the house or soon to be in the house or people in the house or other things in the house and the items in fact help her out in some ways and that this movie sounds like it's gonna be about this happening and to some extent it is about this happening and how that plays into stuff but more so, it's about the people in the house and why they're acting the way they're acting and what their, like, motivations are and what their situations are and stuff like that. So, it's classified as a suspense thriller. Totally agree with that. So, I, it was a ride. Like, and it's interesting because it's, like, a historical piece that is, in a lot of ways, very modern in that way like as a suspense thriller but it's just set in a historical period i want you guys see the others i mean this isn't a ghost story but the and the others is kind of a ghost story so um but something like that where it's like a it's a completely different period but like that's going down and you're like what um so it's and it a lot of it's very modern in some ways it is a modern book like it was written you know recently so Bernadette said that the, the book was like her couldn't put it down book so I am definitely gonna read the book I may regret having seen the film first it's not really a film it's a miniseries eh, it's like a three-hour film I don't know if I'm really gonna if I'm gonna regret that or not but I'm excited to read the book she said the book that the movie was good but the book was way better so I'm excited to read that all right, well, I'm done making this pile, which is great, and I'm very excited about that. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do now is go cut off some fabric so that I can make a towel, and also wash the fabric that I'm gonna use for this. I think what I'm gonna do is I have some IKEA fabrics, some sheet sets that I might use to make this, so let me go grab some of that stuff and we'll look at it and see which one we wanna use, and maybe line it in some linen. Okay, so I have three options. I'm gonna think about these, but here they are. I have this set of sheets that has this pattern on it, which I'm excited about. I got it on super sale. It's marked as $25.90. It was not $25.90, which is great. Um, I think this pattern is sort of dense for 18th century, although Abby went to great lengths one day to find examples that are like vaguely similar in order to make me feel better about this. <laughs> so it's legit, I, I could make it out of this. Um, I have this Ikea fabric, which, mm, I don't know. These don't feel right, like this drawing. I could probably get away with it. And then I have this one, which seems the most right. So I will probably, this is a king set. It has, oh, this is a duvet cover. So this will have plenty of size. And there's, looks like pillowcases in here also. I should have plenty of space to make it with this sheet set if I want to. I think I'm probably gonna go with this one. I have a red petticoat right now. It's not the right red for this. So I don't know if I have any color that would be the right color to go with this so also don't really know what to do about that 
but we can also just clash and that will be fine. <laughs> I don't hate it. Could be worse. It's not that bad. Like, eh, it's fine. I think I'm gonna go with this one. Okay, so my homework for tonight is to wash a bunch of fabric. I'm gonna wash these sheets. I'm gonna wash some like twelve fabric so I can make one. And then I'm gonna wash some linen. So I gotta I'm pointing over there because I think that's my linen drawer, but maybe not. So I'm gonna have to go find some linen that I wanna use for this and then wash that. So I'm gonna wash a bunch of stuff and get it prepared. <sighs> and then read the instructions because the instructions are actually really long and I want to make sure that I know what I'm going getting into when I when I start on this so I'm gonna do all that and then I'll be back for actual stitchy stuff hello again it is the next day I have done many homework items and uh, today's been a low-key day so that's been cool I have spent a lot of time sitting on my couch petting my cats um, the internet. It's probably not the most mentally healthy thing to be doing all day, but it is what happened. Okay, so I have washed my fabric duvet cover. I think now that it's washed, I probably need to like de duvet, de duvet it, <laughs> like make it not in a duvet shape and not pillowcase, like make it into just fabric. So I need to rip that apart. Um, I also have some muslin ready to go for a towel. I also went to Staples and figured out what my ink cartridge situation was and I have printed out the pattern instructions so I do not have to do it on my tablet which is great because mm, that's not my jam I'm too old for that I feel bad because I'm like oh I'm wasting paper but also I keep these instructions on a pattern like together forever and stuff so it'll get reused uh, if I like this pattern, I'll make it many times because it looks like a useful little jacket. So today I need to figure out what pattern pieces I need for the exterior of the jacket because there are different pieces for interior and exterior of the jacket. There's lining pieces that are different from the exterior. So I'm going to figure out which pieces are for the exterior so that I can do a exterior mock-up. See if it all fits and stuff. So I'm going to do that. I guess I could make the lining because it doesn't. I don't really need to have... All the pleats and stuff. Maybe that's smarter. <laughs> Maybe I should just make the lining since we're just checking fit. <sighs> that could be a smarter way to go. <laughs> so I just need to figure those things out and cut the fabric. And then I will have completed all my tasks for today. I haven't like committed to sewing yet. <laughs> but we'll get there. Yay, this this pattern comes with all these different PDFs and one of them is how to do fitting and it says make it well and do it out of the bodice lining pieces. So that's what I'm gonna do, and I'm glad that I thought about that. And I'm glad that I checked, and I feel better about it. All the pieces cut out. I'm excited about that. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and sew at least the bodice part together now just so it's together. I'm not gonna try it on tonight. I am gonna leave the fitting for tomorrow because that means getting into my stays and it's not my jam right now. So let me go stitch this together and then we will have a little try on session when next I see you. Okay, we have one bodice whose straps have been attached in the back but not the front because I, that's how they tell you to do it in the instructions for when you're making it so I don't know I just did it this way for now if it doesn't make sense tomorrow I'm just gonna attach them and then try it on and we have two sleeves that are going the opposite directions which let me just say on my first sew together to have them just be the right way <laughs> that's a miracle so okay I'm gonna go do something else now and I will come back tomorrow for try-ons Okay, so here we are in the stays. Um, 
and they are badly, badly laced. And I have this laid over. So I love the way this fits. I, so far, I think it fits really good. It's a little wrinkly here, but I already know that the side of my body is different than this side. And mm, some of this wrinkling can get taken out with pinning correctly, but also just like clothes wrinkle, guys. So like, <laughs> it's never going to be perfect. So I don't feel super bad about that. Uh, the only thing that on this side that I think is a problem is like, this is hitting me right at my waist, essentially, and I still have a seam allowance to go. Like, the skirts would start way up here, so I think I'm actually going to lengthen this down here and then bring this curve down to essentially match where my stays are, so that will be good. Uh, the shoulders seem good now. Uh, I can tighten them, and I can also adjust the tightness of them when I make them because the shoulder straps are kind of like the last thing you do, so... I'm not too stressed out about that. They don't feel like they're falling off or anything, so I feel like that's good. I always struggle to figure out how to show you my back. <laughs> so there it is in the back. Um, I think this is pretty good. Again, I think I'm going to lengthen this like basically an inch or so. I talked to Abby a little bit and showed her pictures and she agreed um, and said that she thinks they're really short and I'm like, I think I should lengthen them at least three quarters to an inch and she's like, at least. So I think that's what's going to happen here. Everything else, the fit looks really good. I'm feeling okay about it. So I'm gonna put a sleeve on and see what happens there. Okay, here it is. I just have a sleeve on. It's inside out, so it's obviously on the wrong arm. Also, the sleeves for size view A are supposed to be way shorter, so I will chop those off. It does look like there's enough fabric to go all the way. It's starting to slide down as I hold this camera. And I feel like the fit is pretty good. There are a little bit of drag lines when I bend my arm. I'm not too worried about that. I might sew them a scotch uh, with less seam allowance so that they're just a little bit bigger. But other than that, I think they probably fit fine. So other than lengthening the entire thing all the way around, uh, just by adding to the bottom, I think I'm going to go with what we've got here. So I'm going to go ahead and attach a sleeve just to see what that will look like and make sure it fits good and stuff like that and then i think we will be good to cut out pattern shapes as long as everything goes well with that okay so i put in the sleeves and they are doing crazy things so this is what's happening and this was made according to the instructions i can't say i'm a big fan of it so i think i need to move those pleats up to release some of that fullness into the higher upper arm situation. Um, yeah, I'm not too worried about like the drag lines lower because I will make it, it's actually kind of loose down there, but um, I will probably make this a little bit looser. Uh, and I will also make them shorter, which will help with that, but that puff there is no good. So I'm gonna scoot that up a little bit and see if that helps. <sighs> Okay, I look a bit frazzled, and I am, I've had a couple of hours of sleeveable hell, and I've put this thing on like 47 times and taken it off, so this sleeve is just a nightmare, and I couldn't figure out why, and I kept sitting there, I was talking to Abby, by the way, Abby says, hi, Noelle, McVloggy, vlog, vlog, um, <laughs> so I couldn't figure out what was going on, um, this is still a wee bit 1890, so I need to cut it down a little bit more, but essentially what I did on this sleeve, and it, it does look better in the back, although I don't know why it's puffing up, it really needs to be ironed down, I think, and this sleeve needs to be a little bit bigger, like I need to not use such a crazy seam allowance, um, but it's much better on this side now, uh, and that's because I basically cut the sleeve head down, <laughs> because it's like, what would I do if this was Victorian? I was like, I would cut the sleeve head down. This neckline is so <laughs> stretched out now, I have to, like, abandon this twall. It's, I've killed it. But I think I'm kind of ready to cut, because I know what I need to do, so I think I am going to go take a break, because I've been doing this for, like, two hours. <laughs> and this doesn't look perfect yet, but it's getting better and um, I know what I need to do to it. Okay, so I need to take this off and chill for a little while because I am frustrated and exhausted, but I think I understand what to do and how to fix it, so cool.
I have, let me just tell you what happened. I have put this sleeve in at least six times and I put this one in twice. And I decided to hack this one down just to see if I could. And it turns out that was a good idea. So, um, I also broke my stays cord, like the cord that was going through it. My friend actually made me that cord. It's like a lucid cord and I was like trying to get my, I have the spiral lacing on, but I can't tie it off because I can't get to it. Cause I'm like too chubby to figure that out. So I uh, was just pulling on it every time and I, I pulled the cord apart apparently. So I had to take my stays off, lace them with like a basically shoelace like cord, you know, which was kind of better in a lot of ways. And then I had to take them off again because my shoulder strap was coming undone. I've been in and out of my stays like four times. I've been in and out of this jacket at least like, at least 10, 12 times. I was, it's crazy. So anyway, I think I know what to do. I feel ready to cut. So I'm going to do that. Okay. Okay. It's been a couple days in which I have been super productive at getting stuff on my list done that has been on my list for friggin' ever. So I don't even regret <laughs> not filming for a couple days. Uh, so we have fabric to cut out today. So that is what my goal is and that is what I'm going to do. I think maybe I will cut and talk to you guys. I don't know if that's going to work. So let's find out. Okay, no. What I've actually learned is that this thing needs to be ironed, but it's also like cut super weird. So I don't want to pull a thread and cut it straight. So I know where the straight of green is so that I can iron it straight so that I can cut. <laughs> this is how all things go. So I'm going to pull a thread while I talk to you. Uh, this is my like third time in my life pulling a thread. So this is going to be absolutely agonizing for some of you to watch, I'm pretty sure, because pulling a thread completely depends on the quality of linen you have. And this linen came from Joanne. So here we go, friends. <laughs> um, Okay, so what's been going on the last couple days? I've been getting a lot of stuff done around my house. You know, like when you have a to-do list of stuff that like you just kind of put off forever? Well, I definitely have one of those and uh, I got to accomplish getting a bunch of the stuff that is on that list done, which makes me super happy, including doing my passport <laughs> like getting it renewed i have had that literally on my list since before the pandemic because my passport expired last november so i finally this is what i mean it like splits off and then you gotta go fish it out again but it, it actually went pretty okay for a minute there i just gotta find the end again um so yeah that is what's been going on for the last few days I've also decided that this uh, jacket, you know, I really want it to be nice. Like I want it to be well done and I want to not rush this project. So I think this is going to take more than one vlog to make, which kind of stinks, but whatever. I was like hoping that this would not be a huge project. And then I went and looked at the instructions and there are 79 <laughs> instructions and I was like, well, my last one was eight and that still took me three days. So <laughs> like, no, probably not, not going to happen. So yeah, I think this is going to be a multi vlog project, but it's okay. I, there's a bunch of hand sewing that has to get done for it. And like I said, I really want this to be like nice and well done and I want it to be fitted well and you know, look good and if there's any problems with it I want to be able to like calmly undertake them instead of panic sewing. What is happening here? Oh I got a cross grain pull. Great. Cool. What was I? I had some intention of talking to you guys about something. Oh YouTube. So YouTube. I am not a full-time YouTuber. I mean I know it looks like I'm a full-time YouTuber right now but really what I'm doing is taking a break from work for what is turning out to be a couple years <laughs> and I do actually do this periodically I've done it before uh, but there's every intent that I have that I will eventually have to go back to work I live in a place that is simply too expensive and my YouTube channel is 
does make me a little bit of money, which is very nice, and I appreciate all the views and the likes and the passing the word around to other people about this channel. That's very helpful to me, and it does, in fact, make it so that I can stay off work longer, which is fantastic. However, <laughs> that is not even close to what my paycheck was before, or what I could get, and it doesn't have a 401k, and it doesn't have benefits, and, you know, there's a lot of things that come along with a corporate job that are like, mm, this is not really the same level of lifestyle if you're a YouTuber. Also, let me tell you about full-time YouTubers. So in order to actually make money, you kind of have to put out a video every week. And I have been experimenting with not doing that, with putting videos out when the project is done. And I have summarily decided that I hate that <laughs> because it just takes me too long to get a project done and I miss uploading. If I was a real YouTuber <laughs> who um, made my living off of this, I would be forced every week to do it. Because if you don't put a video up, you don't make money. And if you don't put a video up when you're supposed to, your followers worry and they start getting concerned. And also the algorithm sort of gets trained to promote you on certain days and stuff. And I, I don't know how much I actually buy that about the algorithm promoting you on certain days. Like, that's a, I think, a myth, but your followers certainly look for you on certain days. And if you don't show up, they start wandering off. And I know that you are sitting there going, well, I don't wander off. Uh, you are not a normal follower, I can almost guarantee you. If you're watching this vlog, you're probably a more dedicated human. This is going all right so far. I'm pretty pleased with this line that's happening. Um, so, yeah, you're not the average Joe that follows, like, you know, Bernadette. She, you know, when you, have, when you have the followers I have, most of your followers are friggin' awesome and they will just come to your video whenever it shows up, which is great. But if you're someone like Bernadette, who does make enough money to support herself, you know, through YouTube exclusively, um, you kind of have to post pretty often or at least report back about it. And what that ends up doing is making you rush. And they're a reason that, like, even, even like, video essayists, like, I mean, Abby is one of them, it, you have to rush to get, you, I mean, she has to do basically a research paper every week and then read it, which is why she's gone to three times a month instead of four, because, like, you just cannot sustain that. But also, if you don't do it every week, you don't get paid. <laughs> and if you're trying to, like, pay your bills on that, the instability of how many people watch your stuff and how much you will get paid is already a lot, and then not doing that consistently is insane. So you will note two kinds of YouTubers, really. You'll note the ones that consistently post every week. Those are probably ones that are very much making money off YouTube and um, trying to support themselves fully off of it. And then you'll know, or maybe, you know, three times a month or whatever. They'll, they usually, like, will have started out weekly and then switch because it's too hard. And then people who just sort of post whenever. And the people who post whenever are typically people who aren't living off their YouTube. So I kind of post whenever <laughs> um, because I don't need YouTube, although it is um, a delightful help to my mission of not going back to work as fast as possible. Anyway, the point of this entire thing is it makes you rush. And rushing sucks. Like, it just sucks because, like, then your clothes aren't perfect and they're not the way you wanted them and you, you think oh okay well maybe i just didn't finish that one part or whatever i'll go back to it you never go back to it because you have to then go to the next week's video and start that <laughs> so especially things where you're making a project like this or you know whatever anybody's making if you don't get it done in that week plus actually it's less than a week because you still have to edit you have to do all that kind of stuff like it's, it's kind of difficult and, and you never really are satisfied with the thing you made and that's fine if you're there making the thing just to show it on YouTube and there are plenty of people who do that, don't fool yourself. Um, but I'm not, I'm trying to make things that I actually want to wear so I have decided to stop the insanity <laughs> and just 
make my vlog and my vlogs are the week I would I, like I said I was trying to push out a video like make the video not happen until the item was done in hopes that that would be slightly more interesting to people no it takes too long and like sometimes items are really fast and sometimes they're really not and it depends on you know if I'm rushing and if I'm rushing to finish a video and and rushing to finish a video should not be the reason that I am powering through a sewing project like I want to take my time with this jacket I want to do the hand sewing that's necessary but as we all know I am the world's slowest hand sewer so <laughs> That just doesn't allow itself to me finishing this jacket like basically this weekend so yeah so what I'm gonna do is just split this up this is a really long-winded <laughs> explanation of things but it also helps you like understand other youtubers too I mean I could make this jacket super fast and then film it in a way that makes you think that it's amazing and perfect but it wouldn't be and that's the thing about like YouTube and Instagram. It's just, they're, they're all lies, right? Like <laughs> I can make anything look, you know, awesome for one video or whatever, but that doesn't mean it actually is awesome. So, ugh, this is not great linen. <laughs> it's fine for the lining of a jacket. Let me, let me start there. So thank you, Joanne, for having inexpensive linen that I could use my massive coupon on <laughs> but it is shredding as I try to go so that's okay I am making pro progress on this line and I like I said I'm trying to take it slow and do this project right anyway yeah I would I would like to hand sew parts of this project I feel like that would be lovely and I would like to take my time with it so here we are talking about this for 10 minutes somehow <laughs> So I am very much like I have this vision of hand sewing linen in my head that is just so beautiful. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna slow down and take things a little bit easier and I'm gonna produce vlogs and those vlogs may or may not be weekly. I'm gonna try because when I went off of the cycle to try and do it project by project I hated it. Like I kept thinking like oh I just want to put a video out so I can like chatter with people in the comments and stuff and like. I was like, but I'm not even close to done, and that's dumb. And then I was like sitting there trying to figure out fast projects to do. That is so stupid. Like, don't make a fast project just so you can get a video out. Make a fast project because you want a fast project. But uh, anyway, what I'm saying is I don't want YouTube <laughs> to be the reason that my sewing is the way it is. Like, I want my sewing to be the way it is because that's the way I want my sewing to be. So I'm taking back control of my life and my sewing from YouTube. And I'm gonna do what I want. <laughs> what else has been going on? Um, Chris comes back in three sleeps, which I am so excited about. I'm about to give you too much information right now, but I was, um, let's just say, indisposed momentarily right before I shot this. And there were five kitties in the bathroom with me. Like, I'm just trying to pee, people. Like, this is what happens when they're just like love starved because they're, they're used to two of us. It's not like I'm not loving my cats, guys. Like, please, of course I am. But <laughs> um, they're just so love starved because they're used to two of us giving them constant attention. That when there's only one of us and I'm sequestered in here doing sewing stuff, they're like, where's my mama? I need lovin's right now. So I was like, ugh too many cats <laughs> so I cannot wait for him to come back I mean I can't wait for him to come back for me also but also I know the kitties miss him so much and it will be great when he's home so I have made it what is it now 15 days that's a lot of days guys I don't think I actually got all this thread out where is it if you have really nice linen you will only break your linen once or twice through this whole process but like as you've seen I've been just like chunking this out in like two inch strips <laughs> uh, I have some beautiful linen from France that I would love to use but uh, I would like to use that for an outside shirt so like a like a pirate shirt or something of that sort oh, there we go okay but this is coming along we're pretty far Things are not dire. 
<sighs> so, I would love to know how you guys all are. What are you working on? Are you doing anything fun? Has anyone tried this Amelia jacket before? And what did you think? I have many people on my Instagram giving me commentary. Mostly people going, the sleeves are weird. And I'm like, oh, they're just, they're too wide for me or too long, I guess was the answer. Yeah, the shoulder was too big. So, I am looking forward to getting this done though and wearing it with my buddies in someone's backyard. Because <laughs> that is how we roll right now. We are doing very small backyard gatherings in costume with my peeps. There are my guild, the uh, GBACG, is doing outdoor picnics, which I might go to one eventually, I'm not sure. Uh, the next one is Mucha though, and Mucha? Mucha. I think, I think I've only ever read that word, but I'm pretty sure it's not Mucha. I'm pretty sure it's Mucha. Um, but I don't have anything that's that style, so I'm skipping that picnic. I think it's also on a day I can't go, like it's on my friend's birthday or something. So, anyway, I'm very much looking forward to seeing my buddies and doing it in costume and getting some photos and chilling. Trying to take the chill back in my life, which is something that is actually more difficult than I expected. There's just always so many things to do. Like, I, I haven't been to work in a year and a half at this point. And I'm still busy all the time. Everybody's like, don't you get bored when you don't work? I'm like, no. No, I do not. And it's not even just like this channel or the other channel because that one's really actually, you know, it's a little bit of work, but it's not crazy. So um, it's just like life, like household stuff. And like now that people are starting to do stuff again, you know, I get required to be at birthday parties or whatever. So, uh, somehow that takes way longer. And also, I need more rest than I used to. <laughs> uh, I used to just, like, power through stuff and, like, do two or three things in a day. And now I'm like, mm, one or two things a week is probably good. So, <laughs> I don't know. Have any of you guys gotten like that during the pandemic? Like, people who used to do more stuff now are like, mm, no. I think it's the like, I th we'll probably get used to it again. Um, I think it's just the like, it's still kind of stressful to be out in public. I mean, I don't really go out in public, but oh, my friend is coming here and she's coming on a plane and this is the biggest news. Chris went on a plane too. I'm like, ugh. I think I have to go on one in like maybe October. So I'm feeling, mm, I mean, lots of people are doing it. So maybe it's fine. I'm just really hesitant and a big scaredy cat, I guess is the phrase, but I'm just cautious about it. And I have very much enjoyed not getting sick at all. Like not, not just COVID, but like, you know, um, a cold. Like I haven't even gotten a cold in a year and a half. And I'm like, that's cool. <laughs> Can we keep that going? I would like to continue not getting colds. That would be fantastic. Okay, I'm on a spot where I'm like, oh no, where is the end? Okay. Uh, are you going to come out? Are you even going the right direction? Let's find out. I feel like this is the right one. What a weird thing to do. I talk to my friends who don't sew, and they're just like, you spent how long doing what? <laughs> and I'm like, I know. I know. <laughs> it's very funny to watch them. Oh, oh, did I do the rest? I did do the rest. All right. Um, I think I was saying it's very funny to like hear their commentary on. I mean, they think that the costumes are amazing and stuff, but they're also like, no, I've got too many other things to do. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut along this line that I just pulled and that's going to be awesome and straight. And then I'm going to use it to fold this linen and give it a good press so that it is ready to go for cutting out of the lining pieces. And I have to remember to extend the lining pieces by one inch at the bottom everywhere.
So now I'm gonna go ahead and um, transfer all the marks because there's like m registry marks and stuff all over those pattern pieces so I'm gonna go transfer them all. I'm also gonna figure out the top of the sleeve head. I'm gonna cut that down a little bit and then I'm going to go ahead and zigzag the edges of all the pieces because it's linen and it will fray all over the place and nobody wants that. <laughs> okay so I've done that. I have pieces that are zigzagged and marked. They are starting to stretch a little bit which is something that happens with linen like just in general. The schmancier your linen is, the less it will do that, but this is not schmancy linen. Um, it's perfectly lovely linen though, like I, even though it's from Joanne, it's still actually pretty nice. It's like not the highest quality linen for sure, but um, it feels really nice. So what I'm going to do is I am going to iron all these, like not iron, I'm going to press them all, which there is a difference. Pressing is like literally pressing. And ironing is like, if you iron things that are stretchy, it will stretch it. <laughs> so I don't want to do that. I'm going to press them uh, and steam them really hard to like try to shrink them down as much as possible back to their designated shape and size. And then I'm going to run a very tight stay stitch around the edge of all of the pieces to try to give them the best chance possible at not being stretchy AF. I have talked to a few people who work with linen professionally and they're like, yeah, linen stretches, the best thing you can do is stay stitches though. So that's what I'm going to do uh, and give it some hope. I think this is why I'm slower than everyone else because I'm like, no, I'm going to do <laughs> what I've called, what I've come to call tailor things, um, which just means I prep the crap out of my fabric. <laughs> I always have done it this way. I think it's because my grandma taught tailoring in college. She taught sewing and tailoring in college. And so I kind of like I picked up all her stuff. So like I'm that person who irons every seam right after they sew it both flat and then open. <laughs> so I think this is part of why I'm so slow. But I mean, like running a zigzag around these pieces, which is literally guys, I'm on the lining. This is already taking me like an hour. I, it's not like I'm going slow, I'm like, you know, like, it's a thing, so. I don't know why I'm so much slower than everyone else. Maybe people don't do this stuff. Well, I do. Okay, so I'm gonna do that thing, and hope it'll be okay, and then the lining is cut out, and I can move on to the fashion fabric, which is gonna be a puzzle in and of itself, because I'm cutting it out of this giant sheet, so we're gonna see how that goes. Okay, we have a lot of pattern pieces here. All right, so we have sleeves, cool. We have a bodice side front, cool. And that needs to have an inch added to it. This is a piece that's only from the outer fabric. Everything here is only outer fabric. The outer fabric and the lining aren't actually the same. This one is the same though, so add I have to add an inch to the bottom here, but remember I added an inch all the way around. So, I think because this is the skirt piece on these three pieces, I need to cut this off essentially and tape in an inch long extender to extend this piece one inch because I have added an inch to the entire bodice. So, I'm going to do that now. All right, we have some Franken patterns. Uh, the only one I was not sure about was this one because I didn't know if I should add it straight up and down or if I should like try to continue the curve. So I continued the curve-ish, but I still met up with where it was before. So we'll see if that was the right decision. I've never taken like pattern drafting, so that was a guess, but here we go. All right, so now I'm gonna take these pieces up and I gotta separate them out into fabric because right now they're pillowcases and uh, what is that called? A duvet cover. So I have to make them into a fabric. Okay, I flipped it inside out and it has this serged seam. So I'm just gonna cut down the serge seam on this side and then this is the long side. And then the top has a like 
hem that I can't use, but uh, I will just basically cut this off. It has snaps on it and stuff, so I'm just like, ugh, I don't want to deal with that. The only real issue I see is that <laughs> this is a king size comforter, and the fabric is actually as wide as this whole thing doubled. So, like, it's more than, it's probably 120 inches at least um, wide, and I hate working with that kind of width. So what I'm actually going to do is tear it down so I get a straight grain tear down this side because it doesn't, this side doesn't actually have any kind of serge seam or anything to cut. Uh, so the fabric will then be two widths of how wide a king size duvet cover is so then I can fold those in half <laughs> and work with them because it's almost impossible for me to work with something this wide. I've had... For those of you who were here during muslin gate, I had muslin and I had a lot of muslin that was 120 inches wide and it makes me crazy. Okay, there's half a duvet cover and there's half a duvet cover. And here are the king size pillow cases, which I can get a lot of it out of, out of just these. I mean, these were huge. So I'm going to iron this out and then fold it in half so we have like a normal fold of fabric and then iron that flat so that and I'm gonna do that to both of them I will not use both of these by any standard uh, but I'll have it like ready to be used okay I still have another one to do but that one is they're gonna be the same um, uh, two and a quarter yards long and a hundred inches wide these pillowcases are more than a yard and a half a yard wide so <laughs> the lining could have almost entirely come out of two of these because the lining doesn't take very much so highly recommend this method of getting fabric although Ikea sheets are not exactly cheap guys like they have a very good reproduction level print on them so that's why I buy them but they're <laughs> you know these sheets are still like 30 bucks or 40 bucks so it's not like you're stealing it's just cotton all right so I'm gonna get cotton you guys know what cutting looks like, so I'm going to skip this part so you don't have to watch another montage, and then I'll be right back. Okay, I've shown this trick before, but if you're like me and in a situation where you have a plain weave like this, and you, you can see I did it right here, you don't know what to do because you don't know where the grain is, and you definitely want to be measuring your grain lines, you can like literally lightly just put a pencil down and pull it, and it will follow the grain of one of the things, and you'll get a grain line. Okay, so I got these three and then these three pieces all cut out of the pillowcases. So pillowcases are donezo. So I'm going to bring down one of those and I just have the sleeves and the skirt panels left to cut. So I'm going to cut those and then we'll be ready to start the sewing tomorrow. It is 1.30 in the morning so I'm just going to cut this and then cut it out for tonight. Hello! It is tomorrow. The day of the sewing <laughs> so i think today will probably be the last day i'll put into this vlog um so we're gonna see how much we can get done today hopefully a bunch i would really like to get the lining sewn together which i think is completely possible and then start looking at the jacket itself um and then stuff's gonna start getting hairy like because there's a, there's more there's more and there's bottom parts and there's all sorts of things that i haven't dealt with yet so learn as we go so yeah I'm gonna get started and the first thing I'm gonna do is transfer the markings onto the pattern pieces so that I can make sure that everything works and then put the lining together great so everything is marked <laughs> believe it or not this is my jacket this is my waist <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and sew these all together uh, this pattern is awesome in a lot of ways I mean this is basically telling you you can um, sew this by hand it's like telling you to box stitch it which someday I might hand stitch one of you I don't I don't know who I am right now why did I just say that I it might happen though I don't know I'm doing this one by machine <laughs> anyway uh, so it tells you which direction and what stitch to use there's a whole like three page guide on like how to stitch like what a back stitch is exactly and stuff that's pretty awesome uh, and it also teaches you which way you should press your seams depending on how this is going together so I'm, I'm gonna follow these instructions uh, except the hand sewing part also I'm re-watching Loki and can we just take a minute yeah 
I'm okay with this. So I am not going to defend myself here, <laughs> but I am because it's linen sewing over my pins and feel free to come at me in the comments but like i know i know it messes up the timing blah 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 blah. these are silk pins so they're at least really small uh i just really want this to like stay lined up good and like not be a mess so i am trying to pull them out but mm, occasionally sewing over them so it's happening everyone can come yell at me if you need to Okay, so we have the mock-up together, and it's still draping off the side here while this guy cools. I then have to take all the neck edges, which are this edge here, and I think these edges here, and pull it down 5 eighths of an inch, and go ahead and press it, and then baste that down. So, I'm gonna do that. So, now you have to do it around this entire crazy bottom section. So I'm gonna go ahead and just sit here and do that. Okay, the bottom edge is done and baste it up. So with that, the lining is done. Um, and now I'm gonna work, move towards outer, which is very exciting. However, I have this giant pile of these guys that actually need their marks moved to them. And also uh, I wanna go around them with zigzagging, so. <laughs> I'm gonna do that. Okay, this is where the drama begins and probably where I will end this vlog. So each one of these seams is fine to be zig because they're zigzag the edge and so I just press them open slash whatever way I need to press them. But these seams down here are all gonna need to get felled by hand essentially. So because these are gonna be exposed to the world and I do kind of want to do this by hand and the first uh, thing I do is fell it and then I, I make a pleat here. So this is going to take a while. So in honor of that, I'm going to cut this vlog off here and roll it over to the next one. So hopefully I'll finish it in the next video. We'll see. Who doggies? I just read through the instructions again, now understanding what all the pieces are. I have a high adventure coming in front of me and <laughs> I'm excited for it. Like, I think once these, like I, I, I assemble one more piece here and then I think I sew the lining to the back and I have to deal with the whole thing sewing it together with the lining at the same time so there may be more hand stitching than I had anticipated but that's okay we're gonna we're gonna make it happen so um, I'm gonna leave this vlog here for now because it's been a week since I started this so I guess we're back to old style vlogs where like I get done what I get done and that's what gets done. So I hope you enjoyed this vlog so far. Hopefully I will finish this jacket next week. We'll see about that. <laughs> and uh, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. And please also go into the comments and let me know how you're doing. What's up? What are you guys up to? Are you guys doing stuff? Are you going out? Have you been to the movies? Have you done the things? I went to a movie. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, but I went to a movie and it was weird, but also normal. And that was weird in of itself. I did buy the seats on either side of us and we sat there in the masks, but it was fun times. Have you guys done anything like that? Uh, I'm gonna fell this seam and just, I think I'm just gonna pick up the next vlog like right now because I'm gonna fell this seam and then Actually, maybe I'll just fill this one seam and then tomorrow I'll pick up a new vlog for you guys uh, where I figure out the rest of this jacket, which has a lot of instructions. So we'll see. All right. I will see you guys next time with another vlog and I hope you guys are having a great week. Bye guys.